Aha! Hello, a very good evening to you. It's me, Scotty McClue, and we are, of course, live on Facebook Live, the world's top broadcast platform. Welcome, 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 I say, to the Scotty McClue Show. We have one hour of superb scintillating information, education, and entertainment for not just one nation, but all nations throughout the globe. We are a global talk show. The Skype is open, scotty.mcclue, and if you want to come on and join me, then you'd be very, very welcome. Ron Stewart, Angie Thompson, Julianne Scott, James Michael Wells, Martin Park, Martin McGuigan, Michael McGuigan, Trevor Lightburn, hi Scotty, Wadge is watching, Jonathan's watching, Ron's watching, and Julie's watching. Hello, Scotty. Dinky-doo. Welcome, 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 I say to every Every single one of you and welcome to our program tonight for the 28th of May 2017 it's 10 o'clock on Sunday evening and of course we are live on Facebook live that is the big one we've only got an hour though so little time and so much to talk about so I hope you will get to your Skypes or you'll get on here come on the chubbies and leggings says Stevie Anderson. Good morning, Scotty from Australia, says Erica. Dinky-doo, Erica, and a very good morning to you in Australia there, in the other side of the world. Fantastic. Do you think Scotty McClue would go well on a phone-in in Australia? Tell me all about it, because you guys know. I don't know what the radio's like over there. Can you say hello to Erin, my daughter, says Ron Stewart. Of course I can, Ron. Hello, Erin, and dinky-doo from me, Scotty McClue, live on Facebook Live just for you. Fantastic. What's the script with the muffin tops, Scotty? <laughs> there you go. Yes, I haven't got my tie on tonight. I'm in holiday mode, you see. So I didn't think you'd mind if I turned up a little bit cash tonight. It's not working, says Dino. Dino, it's working. Hi, Scotty from Dublin, says Gordon Ritchie. I wonder if we're maybe on some sort of limit, because some people that say it's not working, it's very, very interesting, but I don't know. I don't know the workings of the setup. There you go. So I don't know if uh, perhaps... Top man, says Ron Stewart. Fantastic. And uh, Robert Bain's watching. Welcome, 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 I say. Lovely to have you with us to the Scotty McClue Show. Now, the time is just coming up to a minute past ten. Yes, I think you'd do well in Australia, says Erica. Fantastic. I would like that. A late night radio phone in or television phone in in Oz. And uh, we could have a chat show. We could have all the guests on, of course, and make sure that everybody is watching Scotty McClue at, uh, what would it be, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock? Tell Fiona I love her very much, says Colin Roger. Fiona, Colin Roger loves you very much. What about that? Andy McClure is watching Dinky Do. Now, tonight, a lot to discuss. We're talking about the British Prime Minister, Theresa May, allegedly not turning up for public debates on television. Now, I would have said in this day and age that is the prerequisite for any world leader to at least turn up to the debate and talk to the nation. What's not to like about that? What's not to enjoy? If you believe in your policies and you believe in what you're doing, you're going to want to... <laughs> sell them to the people. So that's what we're talking about. Uh, Scotty, what's your thoughts on Real Radio coming back, says Stephen Wright? Well, I never actually worked for Real Radio. They didn't manage to secure my services. And I think had they done so, they may have had a different outcome. But there we are. That's not to reason why. And ours is not to reason why. But I think bring back Scott FM. I think that was Scotland's finest radio hour, a wonderful station, and I would like to see that brought back. Is there another platform I can watch this on? It's not what, working again, says Angie. Angie, it's working absolutely fine. But I'm just wondering if there's some kind of limitation being put on it because of the huge popularity of the program. We shall have to see. I thought it was just me that it wasn't working for, says Dino. No, uh, Dino, I've noticed sometimes that we had huge, huge listening figures some nights, and other nights, 
not quite the same and I'm just wondering if uh, there's some kind of limitation on it. We shall find out. I'll get to the bottom of it, but it's certainly beyond my control. Need to pay for your broadband, Scotty. I'm paying for mine here. You need to pay for yours, La, and then you will get the program. Uh, so there we go. Conversation starter. Tommy O'Pray is watching. But, guys, joking apart, it is very, very interesting that not everybody is able to receive it. So it may be, as I say, there's some kind of limit because of the huge popularity of the program. I've started a campaign, Scotty. I love Scott FM back in the day. Would you ever consider uh, doing Scott FM if it returned? Yes, of course I would. I spoke to an expert in radio recently, and I said, give me your honest opinion. If Scotty McClue went back on the radio right now, what would be the reaction? And he said, instant return of the audience. Because remember, I had an audience that most stations would give their limbs for. Uh, so there you are. And for some reason, I don't know why the stations don't just say, let's have our audience back, please. Because that's what I would do. Uh, evening, Scotty. Better late than never. This is Michael Paul McVeigh. You are indeed Michael Paul. Welcome, welcome. I don't care. I'm receiving it, says Steph McElheron. Quite right, Steph. And if you're getting it, that's what matters. But there you are. But I do wonder why some people are not able to get it, because it's certainly been broadcast at source. Uh, going to lend us a tenor, Scott, he says, Gordon Ritchie. No, but I'll tell you what, Gordon, you could give me a tenor. You could go to gofundme.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue and stick a tenor in there, or at least share on Twitter and Facebook. It's working, Scotty. These people should stick their heads up their backsides and blow their nose until the pressure equalizes. Ah, the famous McClueisms. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Theresa May appears to be a fierty. She doesn't have the fight to debate. Corbyn, Scotty, well, I, I mean, Corbyn's a very gentle, if very, very honest debater. And um, I would think that um, there's, there's not much point in having a leader who doesn't want to do television, because that's how you communicate with the people. Same with the radio phone-in. Now's the time for radio phone-ins, because then the people can talk. George Mullins watching, didn't you do? Um, I did commu I done community radio. You mean you did community radio back in the day, 2012. I'd love to go back to radio, even if it's Scott FM or Real Radio came back. I jumped back on the wagon of radio, as I've always wanted to go back on air. I understand what you mean. Scotty, internet radio, would you do a show that way, says Stefan. Yes, but internet radio, it's uh, quite difficult. There's so much media out there. When I started broadcasting, there was only a handful of media channels. And now there's so much media out there, Steph. That's your thing. You've got YouTube. You've also got all the online stuff, all the internet stations. And if you're just doing the same thing, that's why you need a talk-in. So uh, Scotty McClue, who's not in radio, is the king of talk. Uh, did you hear earlier um, Andrew Neal ripping at Nicholas Sturgeon to bits the steam barrels? I don't think that would ever happen. I don't think anybody has ever ripped Nicholas Sturgeon to bits on the television. And I don't think they ever will because she's so honest and so clever and so upfront with everything. Do you know that Little England, as I'm calling it tonight, has had huge rises in crime, has had huge rises in anxiety, in threats, etc. And do you know that uh, they've lost 20,000 police officers? Do you know in Scotland we've added police officers and had a 40% reduction in crime? Fantastic. Alex Duff's watching. Jerry Carty. I'm in the bath, Scotty. I'm sweating me. <laughs> Thank you for that. Perhaps too much information, but there we go. Uh, so, we're discussing tonight. I don't believe if a politician cannot turn up and face the nation that they deserve a single vote, regardless of whether you agree with the policies, whether you agree with them, whether you like them, whether you don't like them. As I say, I'm no political animal. I am not bothered either way about party politics, but I am an economist. That's why I stand up for Scottish independence. 
Uh, well said, Scotty. Nicola Sturgeon is amazing. Absolutely. And uh, um, she's certainly a match for any television journalist out there at the moment. I can tell you that for nothing. Even I would not want to uh, rip in, as they say, to Nicola Sturgeon as a broadcaster. I would make sure that I was incisive in my questions, but, I mean, she has done a fantastic Fantastic job for Scotland, as did Alex Salmond before her. McClue, I uh, suggest that you start slagging the listeners. Get torn into a few of these idiots watching tonight and put down the dafties. That would be wonderfully entertaining. And a passport back, something or other. I don't know. Gordon, it says, see more. I'm not going to see more. So there we are. And my name is not Seymour. So I'm not going to see more because the last time we did that, we lost the broadcast. Okay, so that's the stuff. Uh, Nicola Sturgeon, I thought that was a fish poacher, says Roy Brown. Ha, 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 Roy, you've got me weak with laughter, slapping my knees here and all the rest of it. There we go. I think most of us fell out of our cot laughing at that sort of thing. Uh, right, your comments, please, on that. Television leaders debate. How important is it in the whole general election thing? So we want to discuss that. That's one thing we are talking about tonight. Um, and also, uh, this week, I have to say to you, I did a tribute to Manchester on Friday, just after 11 o'clock. You will see it on face. It's not a Facebook. It's a Periscope Live on Twitter. You'll see it on Twitter. You'll see it on Periscope. It's also or upload it onto Facebook so you'll see it there and you'll see it on YouTube if you just put in Scotty McClue tribute to Manchester. That's all it is. And I removed my hat out of respect. Uh, Scotty, would you agree you can't whack a piece and crisps? I had some crisps tonight. You can't whack the ready salted, to be absolutely honest with you. You just cannot whack the ready salted. Fred Walton's watching. Dinky do, Fred Walton. Dinky do. I hope you're um, in good morning whinge mode tonight, Fred. And um, MPs on television, no thanks. We get Jeremy Kyle to sort out the chavs. Jeremy Kyle was my replacement on the radio in Manchester, those of you who remember. Uh, you're scared to see more in case you blow up Facebook, Captain. Says George Raffin. No, no, the last time, George, what happened was we lost the broadcast. For goodness sake. Guys, it's just coming up to share time. Could we share, 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 share? Share, 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 share. As soon as you like. There's a moose loose about this hoose. Dinky do, says Ian Walker. Lord Rockingham's 11. And of course, the theme tune to Scotty McClue's show for 25 years. Scotty McClue's show is 25 years old in a month's time. Woohoo! Mmm. Ah, uh, the 29th of June, 1992, was the first broadcast. That was awful what happened in Manchester. My thoughts are with the families who were affected and who lost people during the attacks, says Stephen Wright. Yes, indeed, Stephen. Uh, watch the Scotty McClue tribute. See what you think. Hopefully, it was off the cuff. I had nothing prepared. So, you know, it's, it's, it's just as it flows. Uh, that's that. Shared Scotty, says Ron. Wonder why it's not working, says Dino Hall. Dino, it may be limited because it's a hugely, hugely popular program and the platform may be anxious about the size of it. I don't know. That's way, way, way beyond my control. I'm just blessed that we're able to go on and broadcast. Also, I would beg every single one of you who has got a YouTube account, who is registered on YouTube, to go on to the Scotty McClue YouTube channel. Just pop that into your search engine, Scotty McClue YouTube channel, and subscribe. I need another 100 subscribers, and that will give us another broadcast platform. Um, Scotty, if Boris had won the Tory leadership, we would have had a debate. You may not agree with them, but you would get a good laugh says Alfred James Wright. You're absolutely right. You know, I can't believe you've said that, Alfred James. You must be septic with me, Scotty McClue. We must be septic because um, I was thinking tonight Boris would have been excellent in these debates. Um, so there we go. 
You need to get Carpe Diem engraved on your big tumbler, says George Raffin. Yes, seize the day as it is on my teacup. I'm not drinking the tea tonight because it's hot in this studio. Very, very hot. Scotty McClure is always hot, as you know. Uh, Scotty, can you explain to me how I got Sonny Govan on my wee radio up in Applecross? But no reception after Stirling. I couldn't get a phone signal to internet but Sonny Govan radio. How does that that work, I imagine? It says see more again and I'm not risking it. Sonny Govan seems to have a good, powerful signal. I was listening to it very recently. Super Little Station. Uh, down in Govan there. Now, were you listening on the internet or were you listening on your radio? If you were listening on your radio, an FM signal, depending on the power of the transmitter, usually follows effectively a line of sight. So although you physically can't see it, a straight line, you can get reception in interesting places. Medium wave or AM radio follows the curvature of the earth. And um, when I was on 999 in Preston on medium wave on a summer's evening, you could hear it clear as a bell just outside Edinburgh. So there you go. Fantastic. And one night I was uh, working my house in Sheffield in Yorkshire and I heard the Scottish voice booming out. And uh, I thought, where on earth is that coming from? What is it? And it was Radio Scotland's medium wave on my radio alarm. The radio alarm had been set in case I slept in early evening. And because uh, I would sometimes have a nap at late afternoon because I would be working on till two, three the next morning. Uh, hot stuff, keep your cool, Scott. Is the George Raffin evening, Scott? Is Janet Muir? Mark Cruden's watching a fine, fine fellow. Sean McBride, lovely to have you with us. So, Applecross. But Applecross is a fair old bit out there, but you may well just have been getting a line of sight right down to Govan from Applecross. You couldn't physically see it because of the distance, but you had that clear line of sight and the transmitter had just managed to cut in there. Why is it after a terrorist attack all the police come out of the woodwork when it's too late? Very interesting. Well, I think the public, they, they think, officialdom feel. I mean, I was in the city centre on Friday for a lunch with the wonderful uh, Paul Harper and Lynn of, um, of uh, um, Heart Radio. And um, we had a wonderful lunch. And there were a lot of police around the central station, huge presence, armed with, uh, with guns, which is a little bit disconcerting. I have to say, but no troops on the streets in Scotland. We don't do that sort of thing. Uh, it's buffering with me, says Julianne Scott. It will do, Julianne. Very, very popular program. Cheers for that, Scotty. The signal must have passed through the Kyle of Lachalch. Yes, indeed, Kyle. Yes, you'll never know. There used to be a lovely little boat owned by David McBrains called the Apple Cross. And she sometimes sat in for the Loch Buoy between Tob and Mori and Mingary and Kilcone. Um, interesting that the Scots, the Highland Scots, add a little bit to things. They talk about Kilcone. Uh, I think Scott FM should come back. I can't believe they didn't get your show after they changed to Real Radio Scotland. I hope to return to radio next year. Yes, they didn't make um, the attempt. They should have made Real Radio to hire Scotty McClure in the year 2000 or 2001 it would have been, and then the outcome for these stations may have been different rather than having to be sold off at bargain basement prices. Um, so there you go. I used to listen to Piccadilly Radio and Medium Wave when I was delivering in Glasgow, yes, from Manchester, Piccadilly in Manchester. Excuse me one second, my dears. Quick mop down. Oy. I always remember getting advice about heat when somebody said, don't mop yourself down too much because that's what cools you. Alan Swift says it's strange they had a dummy terror test in Manchester on the 10th of May and then an attack happens. What's your thoughts, Scotty? Well, you'll hear it all in the tribute to the people of Manchester that I did just after 11 o'clock on Friday. You'll see it there. I've got my dark suit on and I took my hat off out of respect and just did a, a little... Um, ad hoc, off-the-cuff tribute to the people of Manchester, people who I love very, very much. I've spent a long time broadcasting with them, 
to them and uh, chatting to them and of course a household name down there scotty mcclue in the uh, northwest of england Josh Mullins, same with me it keeps buffering well we'll have to watch after yes absolutely i think there may be some kind of limiting mechanism because i can't understand how with these huge huge audiences and then suddenly it gets brought 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 in so there you go scotty they launched a, a wee skip up in uh, Loch Karen. The pipe band was out for it, so it was so were the midges. <laughs> what tunes did you play? Come on, come on. The brown haired maiden or the nut brown maiden is Horo my nut brown maiden and the brown haired maiden the same tune. Come on, Gordon Sterling. Cough. Right, Alan Brown's watching over in the United States in Washington, D.C. Alan Brown, dinky do to you. One of the finest men I've ever met. And I've met some very, very, very fine people in my day. So I say to you, dinky do to you and to your lovely wife and family. I hope you're having a great time over in Washington, D.C. Is Mr. Trump calling in for coffee? Scotty. Uh, Jim Clark is watching. Can't get on this week, and I'm not the only one, says George Mullen. No, no, I know, George, we know all this. There's not really much point in telling me, because I've got no control over that. All I can say is we're broadcasting live, loud and proud, this end, right out to the whole of the globe. If you're coming on, do let me know where you're listening and um, make some points to us. Remember, you can Skype to me if you want to talk to me live on the program. Love you, my friend. America is crazy, says the wonderful Alan Brown in Washington, D.C. Um, I'm getting you better than ever tonight, Scotty, says Fred Walton. So there you go. So maybe some people get it and some people don't. Some place are favorite most of sip here. Mm. Oh, that's beautiful. So lush, so lush. Um, I thought radio signals were from satellites, Scotty. Am I right? They can be. <coughs> it depends what you're transmitting on, what you're receiving on. So there you go. If you think about your very basic transmitter, your voice, and your basic receiver, your eardrums. If I had the choice between Scott FM or Real Radio, I'd choose Scott FM. Um, do you know any managing directors who'd be interested in taking Scott FM on. I might do it myself, Stephen. I'm a managing director, but only for the right things. So there you are, and only with the right people. Uh, it's the Tories trying to silence you with the buffering Scotty, mate. Just remember, at the end of the day, at least you're no a Tory, says Derek Cloth. No, when I was younger, I um, empathised because the Tories were a patrician party. The, the, the Tories' motto when I was younger was keep the best and change the rest. So that's what they were like. They were a patrician party. They never set the heather on fire, but they never also um, upturned the old cart and what have you. And then Thatcher appeared. And, uh, you know, she was the, uh, the wolf in sheep's clothing. And she caused irreparable, irreparable damage to the fabric of our lovely country. She caused irreparable damage to the lives of ordinary people. It was it was shocking, absolutely shocking. Even during the Second World War, the Germans never caused the damage that Margaret Thatcher caused to this country. Therefore, I'm sorry, I don't understand this love affair with the Conservative Party. Um, uh, so who else have we got? Can we have a shout out for the Manchester victim, Steve? I've done a tribute for Manchester, and uh, you will see that there. It's on YouTube. You'll also see it. Uh, it's done on Periscope, but you'll see it uploaded onto Facebook. Uh, stick your tongue out and say ta-ta, says Tom Richards. Ba -ba. It's a bit too early for that, Tom, but that's a great McClueism. You're quite right. I visited the Real Radio Studios and met Mickey Gavin, who's now with Fourth One. If you did take on Scott FM, Scotty, I'd love to get back on here, says Steve Wright. Fantastic. Yes, we could have you on in the afternoon, Steve. Steve Wright in the afternoon sounds good. Uh, Scotty, we're hearing you loud and clear from the Bonecomb Islands just off Iona, says Ian Walker. Fantastic stuff. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I remember staying a night at perhaps the finest hotel in Scotland, Tyroran House in the island of Mull. 
So there you are, if you ever get the chance, it's a beautiful luxury hotel, lovely big old house uh, on the road down to Iona. So you come off the boat at Craig Newer, and Mull being an island, you can go either way. You could go right up towards Tobermory, or you can go left down towards Fina Fort and Iona. And when you're travelling right down there, there's a little branch road that takes you off to Tyroran House. And it is a cracker. Absolutely gorgeous. Very luxurious. Very beautiful. So there you are. Just think this tune that we may put behind us. Lol. Ah, very good. Um, who else? We've got Billy Matheson's joined us and Paul Goodyear is watching. Fantastic. So, main subject for discussion tonight. What do you think of Theresa May and, at the moment, Jeremy Corbyn not taking part in the TV debates. I think that's as good as saying, stuff you to the people. That's what it looks like to me, and I do not think these people deserve a single vote. If you can't appear in front of the nation and justify your policies, your ideas, and explain who you are, then why should anybody want you in a position of authority and power? Uh, I always have coach trips to Iona, a very spiritual island. Yes, indeed. Um, I remember George MacLeod, who restored the Abbey, a wonderful man. George had been uh, in the Argyles in the First World War, fought in the trenches, got himself an MC, a military cross. And uh, after the, uh, the First World War, he became a pacifist because he'd said to a friend of his in the trenches when he saw all the dead and dying, do you not think this is just perhaps wrong? And somebody said, George, if I hear you talking like that again, I'll have you shot. So after that, George MacLeod became um, a, a great patriot, but a pacifist. And um, of course, uh, he ministered to the people of Govan in Govan Old Parish. What do you think of Katie Hopkins getting the old heave-ho, says George Raffin. I always thought that was going to come. I remember a friend of mine posting very proudly about Katie Hopkins and the figures and the reaction that she was getting and what have you. And I thought, but will she still be here in 25 years like Scotty McClue, the daddy of them all? There you go. Uh, time for me to go, Scotty. Take care. Look forward to the next time, says Erica in Australia. Dinky do. Good night, Erica. You take care, Cobber. And uh, see if we can get Scotty McClue a job in Australia doing the late night phone in on National Radio. Right, uh, Scotty, as John Sweeten said, the terrorists don't come here because we're all set right about you. Who needs police in the streets when you've got the people? Fantastic stuff. You're on my big TV in the living room, says Richard here. And he says, see more, Richard. I didn't press see more because the last time I did that, I lost the broadcast. But I like the idea we're on the big telly. That's our other subject for discussion tonight. Do you think that all terrestrial television will soon follow Scotty McClue's model and go online, right? Because television at the moment, in my opinion, is very, 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 very poor. Very, very long ad breaks, very short on content, and they won't risk a live program. The ones I've spoken to go in an absolute panic because they're used to just buying in old programs and shoving them on, thinking the people will watch and the people will not watch because they haven't been properly invited. When I started working for independent television, we were the evening hosts and we invited people to watch with us. Well said, Scotty. After all, it's the people who put them in power. They must answer to the nation, says Billy. Absolutely, Billy. What's it like on the big telly in your room? Am I too far forward, too far back? Please do give me your advice. We're always open to criticism. Scotty, whatever happened to Wolfgang? Steph, Wolfgang was in touch very recently, and I will hope he will come on again. We enjoyed Wolfgang, and we want to see more of him. Two seconds, my loves. Quick wipe down, quick disappear. It's as if you're watching Wimbledon. No. There we go. Right. I shall do my Wimbledon impersonation for you if you're very good. Please do not try this at home because it could be dangerous and it can be quite painful. Right, are you listening? Imagine yourself on a high, hot summer's afternoon at the number one court 
in Wimbledon at the All England Lawn Tennis Club. <clears throat> and the guy says, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. A very warm welcome to this afternoon. Murray is on court, and it's Murray to serve. Quiet, please. Ooh. Ah. Ah. Oh. Love 15. That's my Wimbledon impersonation, but please don't try it at home. There we are. Should the BBC stop doing politics and concentrate on drama and comedy programmes? I think they should, Alan. I was just thinking. I used to be never off the BBC, and uh, I remember doing a wonderful um, Radio 4 programme with, with the great Jenny Murray one Friday afternoon, and I love working for the BBC because technically they are so good. Everything is brilliant. They're engineers, they're audio supervisors, they're sound people, they're vision mixers, all their tech, all their producers, their directors are superb. But sometimes their content lets them down. And I thought, why are these people not ringing me? Why are they not ringing Scotty McClure and saying, Scotty, would you do some comedy for us, i.e. like the late Ronnie Barker or something like that. I could do that standing on my bonnet. And um, the problem the BBC has, they don't talent hunt in the right way. And I can remember Dad's Army, which uh, was really supposed to be about, um, you know, a, a home guard um, platoon. But in actual fact, it's nothing to do with any of that. It was very, 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 very talented actors who had been trained in the theatre doing a lot of busy dramatic business and uh, it was a stroke of genius but i was reading about it and it said even the bbc were beginning to realize they had a hit on their hands and i could give a producer or a director anything they want if they want a winston churchill voice or anything like that we could do all that new boss please says ian walker okay Hearing you loud and clear, Scotty. Kiss, kiss. Lovely to hear the lilt in your voice, says Barbara Ann Haig. Barbara Ann Haig, thank you. And thank you for all your uh, wonderful generosity. Uh, I think there's going to be mayhem, Scotty. What would you do if the terrorists came to Scotland? It's only a matter of time. We would set about them. Now, there you go. We'll set about them. We don't want any of that. They, they, they would be the ones who would be terrorised. Right, uh, hi Sandy, this is Arthur James Wright, Peter Ewing's watching. I remember phoning George Galloway and telling him the terrorists are already here living next door. That was about 10 years ago, says Ian Walker. George Galloway has blocked me on Twitter <coughs> because I said you may have the mother of all talk shows, but Scotty McClue is the daddy of them all. Blocked. Right, not a problem. Steve. We don't bomb their country. Uh, Mrs. May's uh, lot sell arms to the Saudis. They then sell to ISIS. Trump uh, should be shamed. Uh, not voted for. Uh, Manchester, uh, 68 Syria the next day. All kids, uh, 68 Syria the next day. Can't post a picture of your utter domination on my main wall. But you're rocking Facebook Live says Richard here. How fantastic is that, Richard? Could there possibly be some limitation on our numbers? Who knows all about this sort of thing? Uh, because I'm something of a rookie when it comes to that. Lol, says Ian Walker. So there you go. Um, absolutely no, Scotland is not at war with anybody. Um, so there you are. Um, now, the most we can manage is a bit of a shouting match at an old firm game. I always go along to the old firm games early, of course. There's every chance I'll get a game. I can remember climbing over the fence at Parkhead and a big copper said to me, What do you think you're doing? And I said, Climbing over the fence, officer. He said, Go back in until the end of the game. So that was that said. Just jesting, jesting. Uh, I follow you on Twitter, Scotland, at Radio DJ Stevie. Right, Stephen Wright, I shall look out for you. Big time on Twitter. And of course, we're doing a lot of periscopes. I'll probably do a quick periscope after the show tonight. Oh, time flies when you're enjoying yourself. We're way, 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 way past our share point 
Can everybody watching this program right now share, 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 share? Um, John Toms is watching a very fine fellow. Dinky do, John Toms, fine businessman, you know, great businessman. Uh, so that's that evening and not connecting, says John Toms. Does that mean you're not connecting? Is it something I said, or is it not actually connecting? So there we are. Loved your old TV clips, Scotty. This is Alan Smith. Yes, national television. On with all the superstars. Fantastic. Uh, Scotland just wants to be free from Westminster's clutches. I agree, Billy. I think we're being held back by the ball and chain round our ankle when we flap our wings and try to fly. And so quickly, Scotland could repair a lot of the damage that Thatcher did in the late 70s and early 80s. I mean, the Clyde is sitting there. I uh, was down at uh, Greenock, a place I love very much, the other day, and I passed by the old Dry Dock, which is a wonderful place, the Dry Dock at Inch Green. I remember they took seven foot six out of it to get that great Cunarda, the Queen Elizabeth, the first Queen Elizabeth, not the QE2, the one before it, into the docks. Can you please tell my uncle to go to bed and give us the big telly back, says Robert Eyre. Yes. Uh, long time, Scotty. Dinky winky nice photo with Paul Harper the other day, says Sean Finlay. The wonderful Paul Harper and Lynn. What a great pair they are. And of course, you'll get them on Heart Radio. Lovely, lovely people. Super lunch as well. Uh, free the unicorn, says Billy Matheson. I agree, Billy. Paul Harper's watching, one of the finest broadcasters in the world. I say dinky do to you, Paul Harper. And thank you so much for lunch the other day and for treating old McClue like a king. Lovely, lovely, lovely fellow. So there you are. Scotty, great show. Would you do an Andrew Neil style interview with the politicians on a leaders' debate? Alan Cadden. I would love to do the leaders' debate, but I would be very incisive, and that may unnerve some of the um, producers of um, a gentler disposition, shall we say. So I would be a little bit in their face, and I would say, Mrs. May, Prime Minister, would you like to tell the nation exactly what your plan for this is? Ooh. Do you think they'd let me? Do you think they'd let me? You know? And I mean, Mr. Corbyn, I'd say, you're a great socialist, wonderful orator, um, tremendous, you really, really know your stuff, you don't do your tons and what have you, so come on, spit it out, man. So there you are. Um, Scotty, great show, fantastic. Uh, Bert Simpson, uh, I think I sound like you when I do my internet show on Wednesday night, Scotty. He must be mad getting me trying to impersonate the great Scotty, not at all. Remember that uh, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, so I've never worried too much about that. Exactly why sh you should do it, says Alan Cadden. Yes, but we don't want the Director General of the BBC sitting upstairs, watching his monitor and going, <sighs> What's he just asked the Prime Minister? What's he just asked the Leader of Her Majesty's Opposition? What's he just asked? the First Minister of Scotland, and I would say exactly what the nation want to know, la. Uh, so there we are. Scotty, my neighbours have made a short film called 1745 about black slaves. It got to the Cannes Film Festival. Ian, this is tremendous. If you want me to voice over anything, do let me know. If people want me to appear in the commercial, if they want to sponsor this programme, get in touch with Scotty McClure. If you own newspapers or radio stations or television stations and you want to raise your audience figures, get in touch with Scotty McClure. If you want me working behind the scenes with my sleeves up, get in touch with Scotty McClure. It's not too much to ask. Remember, I've got another 20 years of serious work to do and I haven't even scratched the surface. Uh, she would run scared from you, Scotty. Dinky do to Mrs. May, I say. Uh, Tory opinion poll leads collapse. Corden looks like he's going to win on June the 8th, says Tony Kay. Very, very interesting. I mean, I know Scotland's not too interested in the two main parties. They're interested in doing their own thing. But it will be interesting. And I finally got that feeling. I thought at first, 
I had Mrs. Me and ever said, oh, the tunnel's over here forever and ever and ever. Now I'm not so sure. Must have a light refreshment, dears. Oh, that's so good. So lovely. I remember talking to a gentleman from Africa. And he was saying how much he loved Scotland. And I said, what do you love most about Scotland? Do you know what he said? He said, turning on the tap and getting beautiful, fresh, clean water. Because we can't do that where I'm from in Africa. Right, uh, true story about the Black Slaves in 1745. Now, 1745, Ian, this, of course, was the time. 1802 was the first um, abolition of slavery act. Is that right? And have I got that right? 1802 or 1807? You, you make sure McClure gets this right. Because remember, I'm doing it off the top of the head. Uh, so there you are. But uh, 1745, the second uh, Jacobite rising that should actually have succeeded. Scotty, why are all Facebook live shows like those annoying phone pictures? Yes, Dinky Do will tell them. Do you think Scotland will vote for independence? Says Alan Smith. Every single Scot wants independence. Some of them just lack confidence and they're not convinced, particularly well off older people who go home from my pension. But your pensions are nothing to do with that. England does not. In fact, your pension's far more at risk from the present mob actually pinching it and using it for something else. Uh, that's what I would say. Uh, SNP are the toast this year, says Sandy Howden. They're the toast of the world, Sandy. Tremendous stuff. Thank you very much. I knew, Sandy, you'd come round to my way of thinking. They are indeed. So let's have a toast to the SNP. Mm. As I say, I'm not party political. I'm not even a political animal. But I am an economist. That's my trade. I started off, dare I say, in banking. Uh, SNP all the way, says Shug McGinty. Absolutely. Well said, Scotty, says Alan Smith. Well, I'm only telling you the truth, Alan, as I say. I have no political persuasion one way or the other. I'm not a party man. I'm not a member of any parties. But I do like the people to have the truth. And that's what it is. And I think that every single right-thinking Scot would like independence for Scotland. Listen, most of the north of England would love to have Nicola Sturgeon as the leader. In fact, the whole country would love to have Nicola Sturgeon as their leader because she tells the truth, because she's so clever, because she's so consistent. Um, I'm not party political, Scotty, so dinner make me laugh, says uh, Sandy Howden. I think you are, Sandy. I know you're a hankering for the old Labour Party, uh, you know, that mob. But of course, they've just annihilated themselves by not backing independence for Scotland. And uh, had Gordon Brown not made that speech and backed independence for Scotland, they would have been players. In fact, um, the lady that was um, running Labour at the time would probably have been First Minister. Uh, Scotty has political correctness gone mad. Um, the tune was the Black Bear, the bagpipe tune for the skip, uh, the Black Bear. Oi! Black Bear, is that right? Um, now, hello, says Rab Hill. Scotty, <coughs> say, Irene, get the dishes done, please. Irene, if you're listening, look after your man, get the dishes done, maybe even time for a wee bit of high dusting. It's only, um, it's only coming up to a quarter to eleven, so you could do a wee bit of high dusting tonight, Irene. See your man's all right. Get his get his snap tin ready for tomorrow. His pieces. Uh huh. So there we are. Scotty, get a tie on for goodness sake. Right? Okay. Okay. You've done it now. I will put on a tie for you because you've asked me to put on a tie. I'll see what ties we've got in my tie rack, and we'll put one on. Oh. I don't know if you know this one. You've seen this one before. 
but I shall put it on because I do not want to get accused of being scruffy on the telly. So there we are. So we'll put on a tie and then that will shut you all up. I thought I would get away with being cash because it's a holiday weekend. So I thought I might get away with being cash. But uh, if you're insisting, then I shall put on my tie and uh, tidy myself up. There you go. Is that all right for you, lads? Ties on? Uh, or will I leave it up like the old winged collar? There we are, like that. As if we were in the Edwardian days. Fantastic stuff. Those were the days, my friend, we thought they'd never end. And we'd sing and dance. Right. Okay. Now, how is that? Better? Everybody happy now? Excellent stuff, right. Lola just got a slap, says Ian Walker. Uh, you should enter the Eurovision Song Contest the day in your head. Kenneth McKellar was our Eurovision man. What a fabulous singer he was. Tremendous. I thought this was a global show. We're not all Scottish, says Steve Burroughs. Steve, you're quite right. You've complained about that three times now. Three complaints. Should um, We should actually treat it as a meeting. This meeting will come to order. Do you feel we're talking too much, Scots? And we need to be more global. Yes. Much better, says Red Walton. Thank you. Ta, you're lovely, says Rab Hill. Thank you, Rab. I'm sure you are as well. This is a private school tie, Scotty, and private schools do not pay rates. Sandy, they do, they do. They are, uh, a lot of them are charities, but there we are. But we do like to smarten ourselves up. Sandy, you need to get rid of the fish supper on your shoulder, old son. And you have to acknowledge that your mob have gone into the wilderness to perhaps spend thousands of years there. So there we are. Scottish Labour are walking about in the wilderness going, oh, look at this place. I wish we'd backed Scottish independence and been true to our roots and not betrayed our people. And then perhaps we would still exist in some sort of actual form. Hmm. Hmm. Instead of just old guys like Sandy with chips on the shoulder. Uh, give him enough tie and he'll hang himself, says Ian Walker. <laughs> yeah. Does anybody know this tie? It's a very, 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 very famous and distinguished tie. And if you know it, do let me know and I'll tell you if you're right. I love your live shows every week. When did you first start on Radio Scotty? Says Stephen Wright. I um, <clears throat> had my first radio station at the age of nine. I built it in the house and um, I then got my father involved and we found we could hear it on the car radio in the garage. And my grandfather, who was born in 1881, he would go out to the car and let us know if he could hear me broadcasting from the house. And in those days, your microphone was an earphone with a little plastic earpiece sticking out and your earphone doubled up as a microphone. <clears throat> And I broadcast with a one and a half volt battery and it got to the car. So there you go. That was when I was nine. And then um, in 19, I used to do a lot of guests when I was doing my marketing stuff in the late 70s, early 80s. I would do guest appearances on radio. And I set up my own radio station after I'd been in ITV. I was the first managing director of uh, the third radio station in central Scotland. It's all about Scotland. Just carry on. An English guy said we don't speak the Queen's English and he hates us. I told him he's French after 1066. Yes, absolutely. There's no such thing as just being English. If you're English, then you, um, you are a bit of um, many different breeds, I have to say. A lot of French in you. And of course, you know King Harold's last words at the Battle of Hastings in 1066. Oi! Mind what you're doing with that. You'll have someone's eye out in a minute. And then, of course, the rest is history. So there you go. Uh, McClure, you'd be looking like a captain, says Ali Malik. There we are. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Captain McClure. We'll be climbing to 70,000 feet. We'll be flying at 650 miles per hour. You can look down. You'll see the boot of Italy. And we should have you down in Greece shortly. Enjoy your flight. <laughs>
Uh, too much badness in the world. Let's all laugh together. Get the phone in back, says Rab Hill. Do you know what I was thinking, Rab? When I did the phone in in Manchester, what we used to do is we laughed and cried together. And my greatest regret was that I wasn't there for them on the phones that night, the night after, the night after, etc. So that the people could talk because Scotty McClue and the people of Manchester are like that. Fantastic. Scotty, what's your thoughts on Scottish fishing? I'm from the northeast, the northeast, and most fishermen support Tory. Well, they should change their tune because in actual fact, yes, I can remember the Broch, Fraser Bra, Bucky, Banff, Aberdeen when I was a wee boy, the Aberdeen fish market, Aberdeen stank of fish in the mornings. It was wonderful. And you could go and see the fish market, all the boats coming in, the diesels, brum, 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 brum. all that sort of stuff. There was even steam around and what have you. And um, the fishing industry, tremendous Campbelltown, Oban, Tarbert, TT in the boats, um, all that sort of thing, Air, Girvan. Um, and then Europe, of course, made a bit of a mess of it. You're too funny, McClure. Keep it up, says Aleem Malik. But, um, you know, then they made a bit of a mess of it. But I think our best bet is to talk to Europe and get that back. You see, we send our best stuff to Europe. They send us back all their rubbish. Uh, Labour will never die, Scotty, while men like Sandy keep fighting the good fight, says Alfred James Wright. No, listen. No disrespect to Sandy. I, I think it's marvellous. You can't beat an old socialist, you know, and Labour have done tremendous amounts for ordinary people, but they lost their way. They should have backed Scottish independence. They resent the SNP because it's the breakaway brethren, and they shouldn't do, because you can't get a fag paper between the two of them. Um, if you ever decide to get Scott FM going again, Scotty, I'd be very grateful. While I was on radio, I remember to push every button. Never forgot how a studio works. No, you don't. It becomes automatic. It's like flying. Uh, the Broch is uh, Faram Fay, says Alan Smith. Fay the Broch. There's a lovely story of a fisherman from Fraserbra, and he was at Dunkirk. The small boats went down to Dunkirk. And he said, come on, boys, come on, lads, we'll all get down there, and uh, we'll get there to this Dunkirk. We'll follow the rest of them, eh? And we'll pick the boys up and take them back. And he arrived, and there were men swimming about in the sea. And he, he went out, they put the engine into neutral, put her out of gear, out of gear, and went on to the foredeck. And he shouts, now then, is on ears here, free the broch. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. Uh, Scotty, I've heard a true man Cunian accent. I couldn't understand it at all. Wasn't it like Corey? A up joke? No problem at all. Uh, I love my Manchester people. I really do. I was absolutely gutted when I got replaced. But I didn't mind the fact that Jeremy Kyle took over. So there you are. Aberdeen still stinks, but no fish is there at close. Ah, oh, there's no need for that, Derek. That's a naffy way to go on. Do you speak a Derek? If politicians don't want to debate, then that's the death of democracy and the birth of something else. Ian Walker. Very, very, very good point. And we don't want the death of democracy, and we most certainly do not want the birth of something else. Fantastic. Would you ever come back to Sheffield, says Glenn Melvin Peacock. Ah, I loved it down in Sheffield and all that. South Yorkshire, smashing. Scotty McGlue, they call him, eh? That's it. Ah, Scotchman. Scotchman, ah. Eh, if I get a hold of him, I'll sort him. I'll sort him, that's it. So there we are. Of course I would adore Sheffield. I actually have a life in so many parts of the country, and um, I would love to go back to Sheffield. Beautiful, beautiful South Yorkshire people. Ooh, Oh, right, Scotty. Right, are you him off radio, off Alam FM, eh? Uh, radio Alam. What do you think of the fidget spinner craze, says Alan Cadden? Yes, well, you get the crazies. You get the bottle flipping. You get the, um, the Scotty McClue watching. You get the fidget spinner. But, of course, if I was teaching a class, I would say, there's no stress or tension in this class. Put it away. So there you go. Um, I do hope you get the SNP. You might leave us English alone. Nothing was wrong with Margaret Thatcher, says Steve Burroughs. Steve, your nose is growing. I'm going to call you Pinocchio La. I think that would be a good name for you. 
Margaret Thatcher was a shocker. Um, you know, and one of the worst things she did was get rid of the P5B rovers because she didn't feel she looked elegant. She thought she was inelegant getting in and out of the back of them. And that was a supercar. It really was the P5B. Check it out. Would you think I'd suit drive time in radio? I used to do it back on LC radio back in the day. Three to six weekdays. Only lasted three months. Yeah, listen, everybody's got the time on the radio. I said this when they took me from late nights to the morning. I thought, what's going to happen here? And we doubled the audience. Very interesting. You can spin your bonnet round and save us a few Bob Scotty, says Billy Matheson. Hey, some mothers do have him. Frank Spencer. Oh, he love it. Ooh. Right, there you go. We've done that. In a spin. Scotty, if I get a divorce, will you marry me? <laughs> very, very kind. Very touched. I've never been asked before. Uh, Steve Burrows, that's full of spice. Nothing wrong with Thatcher. Ha ha. Is that why she got the vote of no confidence from her own party? Uh, so there you go. Yes, the wealth must come north from London back to Scotland. I would like to see money flowing into Greenock and Paisley and Renfrew and Gurrock and Glasgow and Port Glasgow and, uh, and Clyde Bank and Dumbarton. They are wealth, wealth, Falkirk, Stirling. The first time I heard a Yorkshire man speaking with a Scottish accent, says Shed Walton. That's right. Oh, Scotty. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, did you just do late nights in Scotty? No, I did the mornings, Steve. I did the mornings from uh, nine until midday. And uh, we reached, I think, 270,000 people per half hour at peak. So there we are. Tremendous. Um, wonderful. At least we have a Prime Minister, says uh, Steve Burrows. Yes, we'll always have a Prime Minister. We've had a Prime Minister since the 1741. I think Walpole. So in actual fact, uh, when Scotland becomes independent, the Prime Minister will be the first Prime Minister of England. So they are or of a reduced United Kingdom because there wasn't a British Prime Minister. I don't think that office existed when uh, before the Union. So the Union was 1707 and I think the office of British Prime Minister came in in 1741 and I'm sure Robert Walpole was the first British Prime Minister. Robert Walpole. Check it out for me folks because as I say this is all just coming off the top of the head. But interesting if you look on the letterbox Prime Minister is a courtesy title usually the party call their leader uh, of the government the prime minister right the number one minister but it's a courtesy title because the real title for that office is first lord of the treasury now nowadays it's very difficult to get close to number 10 when i was a boy you could wander up and down i've got a picture of me with a pound note outside number 11 downing street nobody bothered right and um Outside the Chancellor of the Exchequer was in 1979, I think with Dennis Healy that was around just before Thatcher, 78, no, 77, I beg your pardon, 77, a picture of Scotty McClure standing outside 11 Downing Street with his pound note, wondering what it was worth. And in those days, nobody bothered, you could have a chat to the policeman in the door at Downing Street. And on the Downing Street letterbox is stamped, First Lord of the Treasury. I don't think it says Prime Minister. So they go, might be wrong nowadays, but as far as I know, it says First Lord of the Treasury, and that is the appointment. So the most important thing is the money. The um, appointment of the leader of Her Majesty's government is the First Lord of the Treasury, and the Chancellor of the Exchequer is the second most powerful appointment, if I remember rightly, and the Foreign Secretary, the third. So there you are. Used to listen to late night show, Scott FM, says Billy Matheson. Okay, that's it, Scotty. Bring back Scott FM. Something new for late 2017, early 2018. Is that what you call that specimen, Steve? Scotty, the first London mayor was Scottish. He was from Kilmarnock. And he got all the horse and carriages to run in time. Absolutely, the Scots are great at running the show. Fred, Scott has got a house in Sight Hill fully furnished as well, says Rab. Right, guys, I've got to go. We're out of time here. Um, the country would be a lot better if you were in number 10 instead of outside at Scotty, 
says Derek Close. Derek Close, who knows what the future might bring. On that wonderful note, my darlings, I'm going to have to go. It has been a fabulous program tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being a wonderful audience. I'll see you all, God willing, weather permitting, GWWP, next week at 10 o'clock sharp. And we will uh, do more. But tonight we have to put our toys away. I will sing you the song, Are You Ready? Night, Scotty, lights out. No disrespect to heart, we need local radio shows back for Scott FM. Night, Scotty, time for your song. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody, of waiter Zane, au revoir, and a cheerio. Good night, my darlings. Love you lots. Have a fabulous week and enjoy your holidays. Dinky-doo, Scotty McClue has left the building.